Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. I hope you're doing well today. Hope you're having a good day. And I hope you remember that I really, really appreciate each one of you that takes time each day or whenever you can to watch these videos and especially to share them and hopefully we'll get some new collectors. And even if they don't start collecting, maybe they'll know a little bit more about their history. Today we're gonna to talk about a very personal piece from the Civil War. It's a soldier's knapsack and it's not one of the prettiest pieces that you'll see from the Civil War, but it was an essential piece. And it's a piece that every soldier would have had at one time or another. The version that we see here is what's known as a soft pack. And that just means that there's not any internal framework in the piece. They made one that was built around a wooden box frame and they were a lot more durable, but they were also a lot more uncomfortable and they were expensive to make and you just, they weren't as popular. Today we have, this is the classic style. It's made of Kansas, made of Kansas. Yep, these are only one take videos, so you're stuck with Kansas. <laughs> no, it's made of canvas. This one's made of canvas and what they did to make it more durable and element friendly, they would coat it with tar. And so we have a canvas, not Kansas, we have a canvas knapsack that's coated with tar to make it more durable. They have the leather shoulder straps, as you can see here. And one of the first times that I went metal detecting, I was there and it was in Gravely Springs, Alabama, which was the camp in 1864 that General Wilson's Union Cavalry was at. And it was a 26,000 cavalrymen in the winter of 64, big camp. It had been hunted very hard. I was trying to find so something cool and I dug this little piece and it was shaped like a J. And I thought, ah, just another piece of crap. So I threw it down and it turns out that was one of my first uh, Civil War relics. Lesson to this story, if you dig it and you don't know what it is, take it home with you and figure it out before you throw it away. Because what they are, are length adjusters. It's a little J hook like this. And they are on every knapsack of this pattern. You'll find in basically every Civil War campsite, they lost a few of them. The leather would break, they would come out, they, uh, you'll see the J hooks as well as small triangles that were on the uh, length adjusters as well. And on the bottom of the bag itself, they have a little doubled over piece of brass J hook like this. And you find those in campsites because soldiers all over in the east and the west, basically every camp you'll find some of these in and they're a neat and inexpensive piece of Civil War history. The knapsack opened up, like you see here, it folded out. It had one compartment, true compartment, to put things in, and the soldier would keep food uh, or possibly a blanket, just whatever he needed. And the other side had four ears that folded down and had little iron uh, buckles to keep it closed. They would put those, they have little strings to tie everything together, and that's what the soldier would use. And I've heard many reenactors complain about having to carry their knapsack until it gets dinner time, because it would also have some food in there that you could carry. So it covered a lot of aspects, and everybody needed one. After the Civil War, there were a lot of these that were in army surplus. Just like you go into a, a military surplus store today, they, the government sold those into surplus. And I mentioned it before, there was a couple places like uh, Stokes Kirk in Philadelphia and Bannerman's Island uh, in New York. In 1865, Bannerman goes into business and he gets a ton, actually that's not enough, he got tons of these and sold them for a century. He went to business in 65. I found a 1955 catalog of theirs. And here it is. That's a picture of the island on the front. And when you open it up, it shows the knapsack, just like we have here. And it's a whopping 30 cents a piece. 
So they were, they had enough of them. They were still selling them for 30 cents back in 1955, which in 1955 was a good bit of money in its own. Most of the ones you encounter today are th uh, thanks to Bannerman's keeping them and selling them. Some of them actually went into service and there's little things you can look for to see whether mine's one of the surplus ones or mine's one that was actually used. One is the wear and two, a lot of the soldiers would decorate theirs. And this one has something neat. We're gonna turn it around, gonna try it. Let's see how it goes. When you turn that around, you see that big US in white letters. And that's something I think is cool because it gives it a personal touch. And you know, if it was going into surplus and they were selling thousands of them, they wouldn't bother with this for 30 cents a piece. So you know this is one of the ones that actually got issued. And it's a nice touch on a, a regular knapsack. The plain knapsacks that went into surplus and were sold, the problem that you encounter with these is that the material stiffens. When that tar dries, it stiffens, and when they open it up, it will break the seams. So, the better condition and the more complete ones bring more. You can find a rough one of these for around $100 these days. I've got one on the site that is still fairly solid. It's got most of the straps, most of the little accessories on it, and I think it's $295, $295. One like this that you can tell was used, it's got wear, it's got, but that gives it character to me. I like things that have character. It's uh, on the site now at shilohrelics.com for $450. And it's something that's big, it displays well, and it's a personal piece from one of the soldiers. You can just imagine this thing being marched through the woods and it could have been at one of several battles. So I like the things that have a little bit more personal touch. I like them all, but I like them when they have a personal touch. I hope you have enjoyed this piece as much as I've enjoyed getting to be with you. I enjoy it every day when I get a chance to do these. I hope that you're learning some things. If there's something you'd like to see, you let me know. I'll do my best to accommodate. Can't always, but I'll try. Uh, I hope that each one of you are healthy. I hope that you get a chance to uh, be kind you take that chance because it's an opportunity and it's a privilege. I hope that we've got Mother's Day coming up. If your mama's still alive, pick up that phone and call her and tell her you love her. And uh, remember, it's a blessing to have family. Some, some people don't have the greatest in the world, but it's a blessing to have a family. Uh, I am so thankful for mine. Mama, love you. I hope you're doing well, and if you guys uh, get a chance, it's shilohrelics.com. Be sure to share these. Please be sure to uh, become a subscriber on YouTube. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, be kind, and remember, I love you guys, and I'll catch you next time. Have a great evening.